uh, today I will again discuss on Edoconium. So on that day we had already discussed on the thallus structure, then the cell structure, okay, as well as the growth and cell division. Also we had discussed the in that previous video. Now we will start with reproduction, okay, reproduction in Edoconium. So as you can see that. Uh, Actually, Edogonium, it can reproduce by vegetative reproduction, asexual as well as sexual reproduction. So, we are going to start with the first one that is vegetative reproduction. Now, in vegetative reproduction, the vegetative uh, multiplication, it takes place by either of uh, these two methods that is fragmentation and akinates okay so what happened in fragmentation like many other algae the small fragments okay there are small fragments of edogonium filament they have the capability to grow into complete filaments under favorable condition okay so in um Actually, uh, here in these, uh, there are small, small fragments in case of uh, fragmentation process. These small fragments of edogonium, they are, they have the capability to grow into the larger fragments, into complete fragments under favorable conditions. If the conditions are favorable for the growth, they will, they are going to grow into complete uh, filaments and actually the fragmentation process okay in vegetative reproduction it takes place by either the accidental breaking of either of these filaments the uh, intercalary cells okay of the accidental breaking or it may be due to the dying of these fragments or due to dehydration of the intercalary cells so due to this process the small fragments are formed and on the favorable condition those small fragments they will grow into complete major fragments okay so that uh, that is a uh, fragmentation that is uh, reproduction through fragmentation okay now the next one is the akinids. These akinids, they are actually the thick wall reddish or brownish structures. Okay, they are reddish or brownish structures which are usually formed in small chains as you can see here. Chains of akinids. Okay, they usually form in small chains during favorable condition. Sorry, during uh, when the condition is unfavorable, then these akinids will start to form and they will germinate only when the condition is favorable and they will form new filaments. So, the vegetative reproduction in, in Edogonium, it can occur through fragmentation or through the formation of these akinids which are formed during under uh, unfavorable condition but they will germinate when the condition it is favorable now uh, next we come to the asexual reproduction now here the asexual reproduction it usually occurs by the means of zoospores okay so by means of zoospores the asexual reproduction it occurs and uh, these zoospores are, as we know, they are the spores which are capable of uh, swimming, the zoospores, okay, by means of flagella. And the zoospores, as you can see here in this figure, they usually form singly, okay, only a single zoospore is formed within a cell. Now, usually the cell with the apical cap, okay, the cell which has the apical cap, it be it can behave as a zoosporangium, alright? So, just remember that the cell which uh, in asexual reproduction, what happened? The cell which has the apical cap, 
it will behave as a zoosporangium that is the asexual structure in which the zoospore will form all right so this asexual structure it will form in those uh, cells with the apical cap and during the zoospore formation what happened during the zoospore formation the cell contents they will contract slightly all right the cell contents they will contract slightly from the cell wall they will contract slightly from the cell wall and actually what happened a small lens shaped hyaline area a small lens shaped hyaline area it develops on one side of the protoplast which eventually becomes the anterior end of the zoospore okay so you, so you can see this part here actually this part here is the hyaline area okay that is the translucent area where, where the which will act as the the anterior end of the zoospore okay so you can see in figure c here the glassy or uh, translucent area here the hyaline area will act will develop on one side of the protoplast you can see this whole protoplast here okay in the in this cell first the cell will act as a the cell with a cap will act as a zoosporangium then the protoplast okay the formation the cell contents will contract slightly as you can see here it already contracted and a uh, small lens shaped area hyaline area translucent area here will develop which will eventually become the anterior end of the zoospore now at the base of this hyaline area what happened at the base of this hyaline area a ring there a ring of uh, granules okay a basal granules will appear a ring of basal granules will appear and from actually from each of these granules flagella will form a single flagellum arises and the basal granules it remained uh, connected with each other by the fibrous strands okay they remain connected with each other by fibrous strands and if you take a look at the major zoospore when the zoospore is formed you can see that the zoospore is ovoid okay it is ovoid then it is uh, spherical or it is pyriform as you can see pyriform meaning uh, pear shaped okay so it is either ovoid spherical or pyriform and also it is uninucleate you can see a single nucleus is present so it is uninucleate and contains and also contains uh, chloroplast all right so sometimes actually the zoospores here it has an eye spot okay just remember that sometimes the zoospore it has an eye spot an eye spot it is uh, an organelle uh, a photoreceptive organelle all right and this photoreceptive organelle it helps the cell to sense the light direction or the intensity of the light and respond to it so that is the function of the eye spot so zoospores sometimes they usually has they usually possess they also possess the eye spot and at maturity what happened at the mat at maturity of the zoospore the wall of the zoosporangium it will uh, split near the cap region okay the wall will split near the cap region and the adjacent cell it moves apart to make a passage okay the adjacent cell it will uh, move apart to make a passage for the liberation of this zoospore for the liberation to the outside environment all right so it is believed it is believed that the mucilaginous substance is secreted at the base of the uh, zoospore in sporangium so here inside the sporangium it is believed that a mucilaginous substance is secreted that is a mucilaginous substance a substance which has a, 
a gelatinous consistency or a viscous uh, since consistency all right a viscous substance or a gelatinous substance will be secreted in the zoosporangium at the base of the zoospore which aids in the extrusion of the zoospore after absorbing water all right it will export the which this uh, zoospore will be export outside the zoosporangium after it absorbs water and the zoospores after it comes out of the zoosporangium in a delicate mucilaginous vesicle as you can see here the presence of a vesicle that is an air filled uh, swelling in a plant you can uh, in a uh, in this algae you can see this is an air filled uh, swelling okay the vesicle then along with this the zoospore will be will be uh, will come out from the sporangium okay will come out of the sporangium in a delicate mucilaginous vesicle and this vesicle it will soon get dissolved and the zoospore is liberated so you can see that the zoospore now is liberated outside now after liberation what happened the zoospore will start to germinate the zoospore actually it was it will first swim for about an hour and then it will settles on any solid substratum all right substratum it can be anything as i had mentioned uh, in those previous videos all right it can be a dead plant a rock a tree or anything okay to the it will attach to a solid substratum with its anterior and out uh, downwards all right so it will attach through its anterior end to the substratum and during that time when it swims for an hour it will attach to the substratum with its anterior end downwards and it will retract its flagella okay it will retract its flagella and it will start to elongate considerably as you can see here in figure f it starts to elongate figure f and figure g so from e f and g you can see the difference now a transverse septum okay now you can see here after it starts to elongate what happened in figure g a uh, septum will start to form which will separate the base hyaline whole fast remember in the previous video i had mentioned what is this whole fast so this septum which form here it will separate this hyaline whole fast from the apical green cell all right from this green cell and what happened to this green cell this cell will start to divide repeatedly to form a new filament so you can see this is the whole thallus structure of edogonium so it already started to form a new it will repeat it will divide repeatedly to form to give rise to a new uh, thallus structure to a new organism okay to a new filament 